Okay, so we have a new episode of Legends and Leaders, and today it's great to have Sheila here. Now, you're somebody that took on this initiative of how do we make something that tastes good and is healthy, has protein in it, um, and can, you know, you had a family issue that you wanted to really solve, and you realized other people had this problem too, and you put that into a bundle, a package, which is now this really great tasting ice cream, um, and it's based on, you know, what you spent quite, quite some time developing. And I think it's already helped a lot of people and your goal is to help more people with this product. Uh, recently, you had a feature from Oprah that, that I think got a lot of traction and more. And you're on this mission to solve a problem that really needs to be solved. So I'm excited to have you here and to get into your story. Thank you so much, Ben. I really appreciate uh, the invitation and it's great to be able to, to to share the story. And hopefully I've seen a lot of the the guests you've had on here and there, there there's a super lineup and I really hope to be able to bring something to the table for people to take out to help them really pursue their own goals and their own uh, ambitions and their own dreams, right? Um, so maybe in difference to some of the others, I'm coming into this one, um, um, at the prime of my life, I'm coming into this one now I'm 60, but I started this up when I'm 53. So that's also part of the story too, because you have, there's no barriers to age, right? When you have something in your mind, in your heart and your drive, you can move forward. So let me just uh, reel back the time a little bit to give you the under underpinnings of why food and health have always been a very interesting and important piece in my life and what brought us to a situation where we have prolicious in you know in three in three continents um, uh, with a, an innovative product line um, which has broken um, a, you know an IP barrier and a really good a fantastic group of talent investors and advisors and team um, that's supporting the mission moving forward so if you look back, uh, back into my teens, I was very inspired by my grandmother at the time. I spent a lot of time with her and she was a forerunner in nutrition. And at the age of 85, she was interviewed by different uh, gerontology departments at teaching hospitals as to why she had like uh, blonde hair and it wasn't L'Oreal blonde and why she had like very few wrinkles and why she was able to do her taxes faster um, by hand than I was able to at 17 on the calculator. And she attributed the whole thing to nutrition. So um, I'm listening, uh, but I, I went in and, and I did McGill. And at this point, it was the beginning of food science, but it was a very mixed degree between food science and nutrition. It was the first or the second year. Um, but at the time when I got out, um, the industry was singularly boring. Um, and I got a really interesting opportunity elsewhere. So I did kind of a left turn. I got into, into communications and marketing, ended up by being in the media and a publisher um, and working in the media for several years and doing my master's in France. And sort of my life went on, but the food and health remained a very important piece. Um, cut to, go, I moved to France where I've done my master's and met my husband, have three kids. Then we moved to two, in 2006 um, to Hong Kong and things got really tough at that point. So um, transitioned to, I left my life as a, as, a, as a publisher, transitioned to Hong Kong where I became chief problem solver and listener as uh, supported my husband to start to really uh, launch his business uh, in manufacturing and in a life sciences, uh, a life sciences thing. So if anybody knows Hong Kong, it's an injury, it's a, it's a, it's a area in the world which makes um, New York. It rivals the speed of New York. It's small. It's concentrated. It's very fast paced. The pollution is pretty heavy. And anyway, so you cut to a few years later, um, and I'm still uh, very focused on the pathways between food and health um, because we have some health challenges there. So in my family, um, uh, we have several health challenges that, that accumulate over time. They're subtle, but they're sufficiently important that I really need to dig into it. So I've left my life as a publisher. I'm focusing really on the kids, the family, the life there, and also the pathways between food and health, because I'm noticing that there's some issues that within the family that need to be um, addressed and can be addressed this way. I end up by being uh, an informal resource, then I'm a formal resource, then I'm giving lectures in banks, then I'm doing a TEDx, then I'm thinking, okay, I need to roll this whole thing up and put it into a book and then move on with my life. So while I'm doing this, I go to speak to my uh, chief science, my my friend, who was now my chief science officer, a leading expert in nutrition, health, and inflammatory diseases. And I ask him, can you just like help me make sure that my science is 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 correct in this? 
anyways, is at this point, um, we have, as I said, there's a few health related issues that I knew that you could nail them with food, but I just didn't know how. And so at that point at 53, I tripped upon the biggest discovery of my life. And it's very ancient. Hippocrates had it right. Uh, but for many, many years, we've really looked at uh, whey proteins through the lens of, of, of structure. But when I was telling uh, my friend Jeff, I said, like, okay, my, how did this happen? My, my um, endocrinologist said that I ha I'm pre-diabetic. Like, how did this happen? Um, I, my husband's got a little bit of inflammation. Um, there's some, you know, it, small issues with kids that can be addressed, but I need to get over those taste barriers. Like, so get it into people's lives and just, it, it, it helps sustain everybody. So he basically said, the only thing that you can do is find a very particular type of whey protein but good luck, it's impossible to find. It has to be clean, yes, from grass-fed cows, but the kicker is how it's processed because amino acid, the, the amino acid profile in whey protein is the most perfect for the body. And so when you have the essential amino acids um, that are undamaged and absorbable, they support all the systems in the body, not only, uh, not only structure, um, hair, skin, and nails, bones, and muscles, but immunity supports anti-inflammation, uh, um, reduces sugar cravings, um, uh, yeah, you know, hair, skin, and nails, um, gut health, a whole host of benefits. So um, as luck would have it, I tripped upon a small supply, made sure that it was mixed up with some really great flavoring ingredients like Valrhona cocoa or freeze-dried strawberry. And the difference changed the quality of my life, that of my family, my friends, whatnot. And that was really where it came from, realizing that that for a long time, this quality protein had been, or protein itself had been associated with the fitness industry, but much less, so. this was pre-COVID, huh? much less so um, in the um, in lifestyle, in people who were in the front end of life, working hard and needed the support to be their best self, but without complexifying the situation. If you go into any pharmacy, you want to go any, any health food store, or you speak to any biohacker, it gets complicated. It gets complicated. And this is a very simple solution that is delicious because those two worlds that of, um, of uh, indulgent like uh, enjoyment and health have been um, dissociated for too long. In fact, they've been divorced. So I really wanted to associate these two worlds of um, really good quality food that you enjoy every day and science back benefits. So that was really the impetus behind Prodelicious. And I launched it literally from a cupboard in Hong Kong in 2017. That was the origin. We're now, as I said, in three co continents and we've got, um, and since then we, you know, we've, we've created a, actually a world first in an ice cream, which I'm really um, fascinated about. So you have really two, um, two, uh, two product lines, right? So you've got the very quiet and silent hero of this, which is a very, very high quality uh, whey protein. And believe me, my CSO uh, and, and, uh, and me, we ask the questions and we drill down to find the quality that we need to deliver the outcome. And the outcome is um, health. Uh, and there's very specific uh, areas that we're looking for, as well as F and B quality. So it's a very, uh, it's a, a very high quality uh, whey protein, which is absolutely delicious because we, it's, you, we mix it with like Valorona cocoa or freeze dried strawberry. So it's used in high end F and B, for instance, in Compass with a lot of the big banks or, or, or law firms as a transformed and, and, and signature ingredient. And also we have a very uh, loyal customer base um that's been with us uh, really from the beginning it just keeps on growing from there but where did the ice cream come from the ice cream mm -hmm. is interesting because the thing with this quality whey protein is you want to keep it um you want to keep it cold one of the things that is often overlooked in the biochemistry in protein is the fact the essential amino acids, which are the ones that drive immunity or um, drive reduce um, inflammation, are antioxidant. They are heat sensitive or sensitive to the Maillard reaction, which is a reaction when you have when you're when you're cooking. Um, and so we we uh, if if you keep it 
cold um, or, or, or below 70, you permit, you don't damage the essential amino acids, which are the limiting factor for, for a lot of, um, of, uh, of, you know, baseline wellness that we all need because a lot, all of our systems are driven off of, uh, of protein. You have at any one point, you have about between 10 and 40,000 proteins in your body at any time. So your whole system is driven off of protein. So the, the fact that it's cold filter processed, um, um, allows for the essential amino acids to survive, thrive. And then because it's so absorbable, you just go into system. So the uh, very early on, um, I was sort of the obsessed with the idea of ice cream because ice cream is perfect, you know, uh, vehicle for this quality protein. It's the world's favorite dessert. 23 pounds a year are consumed by uh, the average North American. It's an industry which is about 18 billion uh, in the U.S., um, at the same time, you've got um, just shy of uh, 100 million who are pre-diabetic and any average scoop of ice cream will have about a half of what the World Health Organization recommends as your as your uh, quantity for um, for sugar added sugar per day. So I thought we can make something with this that is not only rock on delicious that would you would like anybody would want it you know to serve as a dinner party they'd be really they'd re be really proud it's delicious or uh, or you know an athlete after a workout or at a dinner party or a kid coming home from from school that you wanted to make something which is indulgent and gorgeous and tasty but at the same time not just not bad for you but good for you good for you so that was um, an obsession that started probably, uh, I think, in about 2018 or 2019. So I, I went around and spoke to in Hong Kong at the time we were living there. We're now based in Toronto. And so that's the, you know, the uh, we're so we. Uh, the U.S. Is, is a big part of our market uh, focus right now. Right. So um, at the time when we were living there. Um, I was looking at, at different partnerships to develop uh, an ice cream. Found um, a, 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 a great French chef, Michelin starred, and that he we worked with him for the initial prototype. Then we brought it here to be able to move it from the prototype to a um, uh, actually something which is scalable, and that's when it, it, it got difficult because we worked with a lab here in the U.S. and after. I think about six months of R&D came out with the most gorgeous, drop dead, three flavors that were base. They blew out, um, you know, we did blind taste tests and it, um, they, it, it beat out um, a, a lot of the, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to name it, but a lot of the high end competition. We had A-B testing and it blew out from a taste perspective. That's all we were looking for from a taste perspective. And then afterwards, you know, the benefit of the fact that actually is beneficial, stabilizes sugar cravings, stabilizes the glucose, insulin, supports uh, supports your structure. That's a bonus, but it's actually good for you. Um, so we we had we had the grail, and then we went to go make it scalable, and that's when it got difficult because um, there's a whole different thing when you have a, an, in a lab setting to making it in a in a in a scalable format basically because of the 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 uh, you run the risk of actually mucking up the machines um with this quality and quantity way because we have between 9 and 11 grams of high quality protein per serving and zero added sugar and there's we're 50% higher than the average uh, than the than the highest uh, competitor right now um and the to get that amount the we did a lot of uh, we have obviously that we have a patentable process in there but there was a lot of of work in order to um actually be able to deliver something which is gorgeous and 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 tasty and beautiful and indulgent with that amount of protein because normally you basically you break the machines so that was early last summer when we realized mm -hmm. ah, we did it we have uh, a recipe which is actually um, everything we wanted, and it's scalable, and we can grow now. So that was sort of the 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 story of how we got from you know from the the impetus at the beginning to really where we are now at the beginning of two thousand twenty four. Huh. So so you've got to this point now where you have a product that you can think can really scale. How do you go about marketing this to people that, you know, are, are in the traditional ice cream space and, you know, want it? And how do you compete with a product that maybe 
um, you know, has that type of appeal already. And, and with health, it may not be something that is as interesting to people, although you can compete from a taste standpoint, how do you market it? And maybe go into that market as well as, as well as target the people at the same time that are, do, are concerned about health. Like how can you bridge both those worlds through marketing? You're right. We do. We do bridge both those worlds. So we're 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 head to head with the um, uh, our target market is our target market is the consumer. Uh, and, you know, it's sitting within that wellness space. Right. The wellness uh, the uh, the wellness market is a one point eight trillion dollar industry. And then you look at the the, the food sector it's uh 280 billion worldwide now with a growth rate of 8.7 percent so um um our consumers are within that group and our consumers are looking for alternatives that are um without compromise that they're really enjoying so let me just give you a couple of examples um one uh somebody um in new york who's uh who's a diplomat and who has, you know, goes out to all the great restaurants and great, uh, you know, g- great meals. But um, this is her choice um, because she did, there's no compromise on taste. But at the same time, um, uh, it's actually sta- it's it's good for her. It's it's positive. She's like 50. It's positive for her from a health point of view. So this is like, you know, her her. This is one persona, but it's actually a, a you know a, a customer. Um, another one that um, who's uh, who runs a, a big uh, um, communications firm uh, again in 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 uh, in, uh, in New York, but who's concerned, like who's conscious of his performance and his health and his whatnot, loves food, loves food. But this has become he switched from one to another one to Prolicious because it provides him the taste that he's looking for. Um, but it also supports it supports his health. Another person who's an officer um, in the army uh, that I know said, mm-hmm. "Oh my God, it's got uh, twice the amount of protein that um, than another than you know. Uh, this is what I need." So there's a whole you we're sort of we're on both sides. We're kind of the torchbearer at this point. We're actually the, not at this point. We, we are the torchbearer of ice cream, which is no compromise and which is both um, indulgent and positive in health. That's good to hear. So you, know, you have this deal. I, I don't know if it's fully activated yet, but you're, you're really starting with uh, Equinox Hotels and doing an integration with them. Why, why is it really important to you to be at Equinox Hotels? I mean, yes, there's, of course, this fitness tie in and there's an audience that can buy, you know, what you're selling. But um, how do you think that that will be like the stepping stone for, you know, what you want to do next? And what do you aspire to really accomplish with this integration at Equinox? So Equinox, if you look at their values, they match so perfectly. If you look at the menus that they have on 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 their like electric lemon or the menus that you have on their website, they choose the quality of the ingredients based on the outcome from a health perspective. So again, it's no compromise. They're choosing the best quality ingredients, and this is what they deliver from a health perspective. So there's a there's a there's a value association from a quality ingredient and what it's going to deliver from a health perspective, no compromise. So in, in every way, it's a partnership that we're so, so, so excited about because there's, um, there's, there's a, an alignment in, uh, in values. Mm-hmm. How have you seen the like direct to consumer ice cream, you know, like ice cream sales been, um, you know, kind of catering towards that uh, compared to retailers, like how significant has direct to consumer online been for you? So we're an omni-channel distribution. Um, so B2B and direct to consumer. So the B2B are like right now we have uh, three, three uh, uh, big conversations that are, are going on right now and that are, um, that are sort of uh, larger in bulk, but image and volume, image and volume. Mm. The, the retail, um, we, we stick to, you know, the pre, we're very careful how we're rolling out in retail. We have a fantastic broker team, fantastic broker team. Uh, but we're careful to keep in, you know, the, 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 the premium regional and national uh, distribution channels. Um, and, but that's going to take some time to, un, to unfold. To be um, the, we have the, the, the direct to consumer is, is uh, available online, not a problem whatsoever. But in order to get it to the the customer in a pristine format, 
Um, so it's it's not a puddle. You know, you can cut corners on you can cut corners on on distribution costs, but then you you risk the the, the quality of your of your food when it arrives. We really we prefer to have a um, work with a supply chain where we know we, we're confident when it arrives, it's going to be in perfect condition. And so that's there's a cost associated with that. So the online distribution, we see this right now as people um, enjoy Protolicious or the ice cream uh, paradise in the retail or in the B2B um, settings. It's easy to go on. OK, I'll just I'll grab some, you know, I'll grab six for my family and have it in the freezer. So it's it's a service to the cons uh, to the customer right now probably less of a discovery route just because of the cost of the distribution so that'll be through the b2b and the retail but then as people enjoy it we've seen that the sales uh, the people you you have a a, a regularity that comes in you just grab six put it in the freezer and it's you know there for for you for your family when so Sheila, you've had this focus on ice cream now and you started really with a with creating this protein um, that can be applied to many things. Like what are some of the other categories you've thought about integrating with and you know what could what can we expect maybe in the next five to ten years in some of those categories like of you expanding to? So dairy, it would always be dairy, right? And dairy, when you look yeah. at the um the the the, the global uh, or even just the US uh uh wellness uh functional food industry, the dairy is is uh probably about a hundred and 15 billion, I believe, in that vicinity. So we'll always be in dairy because for the simple reason that we will always deliver a quality protein, which is the best for the body. And clinically, that's this quality whey protein. So it'll always be within the dairy. So we're playing, we have a lot of things actually up our up our sleeve right now, but it'll be kind of down two different lines, the current one that we have, which is, you know, you've got the gourmet line with the paradise and the wellness line that we have with the, with our, our, the, the protein powders. So one is sort of gourmet led and then followed by wellness. And the other one is really the, the reverse. So we've got, we've got some product extrapolations kind of down both, down both lines, which are, which are actually fun and innovative. A couple ones that we've had some fantastic success with in, in the, in the initial stages in Hong Kong, um, that, um, that were definitely considered on, 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 uh, on rolling out. That was actually the beauty of Hong Kong because it's a small, sophisticated, great market. So you can test out a lot of different things. And we've had some, a couple things like great success that I think will roll out on a, on a larger line, but again, dairy, uh, because it's going to be, uh, with, uh, with this high, super high quality whey protein, um, and, uh, either down the, the gourmet line or the wellness line. So, you know, Sheila, you mentioned earlier on that being in your fifties and you started this, you can start at any time, right? Um, how, how, like in terms of starting it when you were 53, you know, how has it been, like, like what were some of the advantages potentially being you know a bit older when you started your business? Were there you, know, you feel like because you had a lot of learning experiences in the past that was helpful for you here? Like would you say overall it's been a benefit to start in your fifties? Like what would, what would you say? So yes, I do actually. As long as you've got as long as you've got really clear mind and energy, um, yes, I do because you know yourself, you know your you know you know yourself, you know your environment, you know your reactions, um, and it's also about people right it's also a lot about about dealing with people because when you're building you're building with people and and that comes that comes a, a lot into play and i think also the thing that has been I, I came into this with a huge passion uh for this product and what i could see would make a big difference to people's lives not necessarily because i was dying to be a ceo right i just this had to, this came with it <laughs> This came with it, so it was a lot of a lot of learning in order to embrace all you know the the, the finance, the supply chain, the the legal da, 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 across particular across this type of geography. But one thing for me, which has been um, super important in there, is that for 15 years I've been um, uh, Kundalini Yoga. Uh, so I've got way over my 10,000 hours in teaching and training and and my own practice. So every day it's something that I I practice. So. When my calls start at seven thirty in the morning, I, 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 you know, my practice is twenty minutes, not much more than that, you know. And I put in there, I put in my micro three minute meditation, but I always do that because um, you're when you you're it's through breath 
breath can um, breath is the only thing that we really have to influence the quality of our, our, our mind and our thoughts. And so when you cultivate the use of breath intentionally, it can have a really big um, supporting impact. So if, that was an undeniable uh, support. And in fact, I, I, you know, once every couple months, I'll do uh, a breath work and, and meditation workshop for, for the, you know, for the extended, for the extended teams. But I think age um, means that you bring in the experience you've had up to date, the tools that you've figured out over time, the relationships, the contacts that you have. Um, and as long as your energy, your vitality and your energy are, are, are like are have been have been um, uh, what's the word maintained and, and upkept over time. It's it's a great time to to start. Really, it's a great time to start. Yeah, glad glad to hear that. I mean, it's good to you know you're I think you're inspiring people you know to start at, at any age, and it's awesome that you're an example of that. Well, Sheila, that's all the questions that I had. Um, I appreciate you coming on. I think it's you know it's really great that you've taken on this initiative and try to solve a problem that really hasn't been solved yet. And um, you you decided that, hey, I'm not just going to have this issue myself and just going to be between my family. I'm going to actually try to help other people. And, yeah. you know, right, like you mentioned, you didn't necessarily want to be a CEO, but now you're building this because you needed to. And I like how mission driven you are and how focused you are on it. So I'm excited to see your continued success and appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much for your time, Ben. Really appreciate it. And um, all the best to you in the future. And I really appreciate this, this exchange.